Hey, Flower Tribe, it's Kelly and Sheldon Lehman, and we're going to show you what we're doing to our limelight hydrangea today because we noticed this really drooping branch. We noticed that this branch is getting weighed down. And you can we're kind of see in there, yeah. See how like low to the ground it is? Right. And if it gets much heavier, we think it might snap. So what we're going to try to do is tie it up to this trellis. So I think that when the snow comes and the heavy rains, it's definitely going to snap off. So like, you know, we thought about leaving it and then it just kept getting lower and lower. So some of the choices that we had, though, were to just, you know, cut off these flowers and see if it goes up a bit, which is probably a good idea. So shall I think that, you know, we're talking about raising it. But do you think we should cut off the flowers first or would you rather just well, let, give it a shot? Let's see how we get it raised. OK, because it would look really pretty coming over this trellis, all right? Off coming on this side. OK, so show me some of the things that you're using, though. Show what, what was your idea? Uh, a couple of these plastic ties. So zip ties. And what's the idea? You're going to zip tie it to this yeah, I'm gonna trellis? Yeah, the, the, I'm going to try to zip tie that part of the branch up into the trellis here. Right, because that would look really pretty draping over it. I mean, it's such a huge, long, gorgeous branch. Um, I mean, the other alternative was to just kind of cut it off, which, like, you know, would be healthier for the plants, but I'm being a little bloom greedy. I want to see if we can make it work where we keep the blooms, keep the branch, and yet take that um, stress off the plant of having to support it by itself. So I think that's a good idea, Shell. So you've got the zip ties. Right. I'm going to lift it. Lift it yep. So two zip ties together. Okay, now, and I want it to sit on top of this. I don't want it to droop over. I want it to sit on top of this as much as possible so that it doesn't start falling down again. Okay, so we decided to actually drape more of these blooms over the top to make it even more secure. And when I say we, I mean Sheldon. <laughs> <laughs> Just give them space because when they get bigger, they're going to want to grow and we don't want to like choke the plant, you know, like the stem. We don't want that zip tie to be digging in as those stems get larger. So just give like a lot of space between the plant and the zip tie. So when Sheldon did the first one, there's a lot of wiggle room here between the zip tie and the stems. I want to over tie that that just is going to, what do you think, go into the stem? It might. We're going to have to check it, you know? Yeah. This is the fix for now. But, you know, guys, like anything else that, you know, growing and living, you got to keep checking on it and reevaluating that it's happy and healthy. So this looks pretty awesome. Wow. All right. So um, it is uh, September and the plant, you know, like this is a good time to do like a little, little cleanup. You don't want to do a heavy pruning by any means. And for the most part, we don't prune back this limelight hydrangea at all. And if you were going to prune it back, you would do that like, you know, the end of winter, early spring. And at that point, you can cut the plant back by about a third if you want. But we don't do that because when you, you, you know, give these guys a heavy pruning, you wind up getting giant, giant colossal blooms that make it weigh down even more. And a lot of times those stems crack even more. So you can tell these blooms are really, they're beautiful, uh, but they're not, you know, like 18 inches long or, or two feet long, unless you want that look. And if you want that look, then it is a good idea to prune this back at the end of winter or early spring. But what we are gonna do is exactly what Sheldon's doing right now. He's cutting out some of the spindly sticks right now. You wanna get rid of like those little uh, like the cheesy, you know, little tiny baby branches that are kind of spindly because you want to just keep the very, very healthy branches. So Sheldon's cutting in there with a the, uh, tool that we use called the Prunarbo. Uh, we love this tool. I'll put a link in Amazon descriptions below. It just really, you know, helps cut those branches without having to use a lot of wrist effort. And this is really good for people, especially with like arthritis or it just saves your wrist and your fingers from doing all the work. Um, so yeah, we're going to cut all these spindly guys out. I'm actually going to make some bouquets with some of these because they're semi-dried out now, which is another reason why I love limelight hydrangea. And so I'm also looking for branches that have like little holes in them because that means that we might have some borer insects. So you want to get rid of anything that has insects, 
anything that looks, you know, really dead. So this is a good time to clean up. And I'm looking at a whole bunch over here. Spindly, spindly, tiny ones that, yeah, exactly. You got a whole barrage of them in here. Like they're not doing, they don't have any blues on them. There's no leaves on them. So let's also uh, do this because it's going to allow for a lot of aeration for the plant because hydrangeas love to have a lot of air circulation. And when you have all these branches that don't have leaves on them, uh, they don't have blooms, they're just kind of stickly, they're not performing anymore, cut them right out. I mean, it's almost like a little house. Lucy likes to lay under the, the shade of it here. Um, but this plant's been thriving for like 20 years. And we just, you know, we just keep cleaning it up cutting out those dead, damaged, and diseased branches. And uh, like I said, we hardly ever even prune this back. And I don't think I've ever even fertilized this hydrangea. I'm not big on fertilizing plants unless they actually like need it, if they look distressed or they're not performing. Uh, but this is a beautiful, beautiful, easy hydrangea to grow in your garden. It gets super large though, but I want to tell you, if you have a smaller garden, they have something called little lime. And I'll show you what that looks like right now. These are going out the barn door today. We just borrowed it for some pictures. Quick little pit stop at some beautiful hydrangeas that Proven Winners just sent us. And Limelight Hydrangea is also a Proven Winner. And this guy is a little lime. So Proven Winners sent us this beautiful plant also. And I'm going to tell you about how tall it's supposed to get. I think it's between two and three feet, but let me double check. So this is, I take it back. This is called, oh, this is called Little Lime. It's considered to be a dwarf limelight. And it gets to be between three and five feet tall. So just, so now you're in the know. So that's Little Lime. And these are a whole bunch of the other proven winners. Hydrangeas that they sent me this week. And we're going to get all of them in the ground. I think there's... There's just a ton of them. They're spectacular. All right, guys. All right, Shell, give me a wave goodbye. Thank you, husband. Okay, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for joining us in this video. And please say hi to us over on my Cranberry Fields Instagram page. You can also find us on TikTok. And I made a whole bunch of podcasts for you. You can find those wherever you listen to your podcast. And know that I made a whole bunch of online flower courses for you with easy to follow tips on how to grow beautiful flowers just like these in your own garden. I will put all those in descriptions below. And please also let me know where you're viewing this from in this great big beautiful world. I love to see how our flower tribe is growing around the globe each week. Also check out our Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group because there's thousands of gardeners from all over the world and they're asking and answering loads of garden questions over there. And know that YouTube has allowed me to have a super thanks uh, button attached to this channel. And if you'd like to buy us a cup of coffee or let us know if you appreciate these videos, uh, that would be terrific. Or you could just give us a like or a comment below. I would appreciate that. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. 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 Bye.